In our next lesson from Chapter 20 on DNA Replication and Repair, we want to look at DNA damage. Let's first of all define what we mean by mutation. It is the alteration of a cell's DNA so that there's some change that's heritable. A single cell parent that has been mutated will pass that on to daughter cells. Multicellular organisms pass the mutations to their offspring only if the DNA is mutated in reproductive cells. Otherwise, it affects only the direct progeny of the original cells. For instance, if the DNA in a kidney cell was mutated, the progeny of that kidney cell will carry that mutation. It's a heritable change. However, if the mutation is only in that kidney cell, then a human carrying that mutation will not pass that on to offspring. That will only occur if the mutation is in a reproductive cell. These mutations or changes can be positive or negative. Most often they're negative. Cells also have a system in place so that if the DNA has been badly damaged, it will result in apoptosis. That's a kind of programmed cell death. This ensures that a cell carrying badly damaged DNA will not produce progeny cells. So we want to look first at how the DNA gets damaged. That we'll do in this lesson, and in the next lesson we'll see how it gets repaired. Point mutations are single nucleotide substitutions, where there's only a single nucleotide change. If that change involves a replacement of one purine for another, or one pyrimidine for another, that's called a transition mutation. If it's a more profound change, that is a purine replaced with a pyrimidine, or vice versa, that's a transversion. So how do these replacements occur? Well, the first most common would be mistakes made by DNA polymerase. Now remember, it has proofreading ability, and that limits the error rate to one in a million. But we have four billion base pairs, so it will certainly at some point incorporate the wrong nucleotide. Those are mismatched bases. And here we have an example of an abnormal base pairing between G and T. G would normally pair with C. After we've incorporated the correct nucleotide, the base itself might be damaged. This often occurs with reactive oxygen species, or ROS, like superoxide radical or hydrogen peroxide. These are the byproducts of oxidative metabolism. So any organism that carries out aerobic respiration will produce these reactive oxygen species and they have enzymes that help them to neutralize these compounds. However, while they still exist, they might damage the DNA and one example is shown here where guanosine base has been oxidized to an oxo form. And since we've changed the chemistry of the molecule, it can base pair with either a C or an A. Normally, if guanosine is in our template, we'll incorporate C into our new DNA strand. However, if it's been damaged so that it's now an oxyguanosine, we might also incorporate an A. In the next replication cycle, that A will direct the incorporation of a T. And so after two cycles, we will replace a GC base pair with an AT base pair. There are also other types of DNA damage that occur on a regular basis. One is spontaneous depurination. In other words, the glycosidic bond that connects the base to the sugar is broken. And that's illustrated at the top of our slide here. Here guanine has been spontaneously hydrolyzed so that we release the guanine, nucleot uh, guanine base and we have an abasic site. So there's nothing to direct DNA polymerase with regard to which nucleotide to incorporate. This actually occurs about 18,000 times in a day. There's also a spontaneous deamination that occurs with cytosine bases. The amine group attached to cytosine might be spontaneously hydrolyzed, deaminated, to produce uracil.
Remember, uracil is a base we find in RNA, not DNA. And again, the base pairing interactions are different. It can base pair with either C or A. So instead of incorporating a G, we might incorporate instead a C or an A. So again, over time, we might replace that GC base pair with a TA base pair. This spontaneous deamination occurs about 500 times in a day. So in other words, today, during the course of the day, your DNA will be spontaneously depurinated 18,000 times and deaminated 500 times. That might seem a little discouraging, but as we'll start to learn in the next lesson, we have some pretty sophisticated repair mechanisms to repair this kind of damage. Another mutation that can occur is in response to radiation, x-rays or gamma rays or UV light. It causes pyrimidine dimers, and that's illustrated here in the case of a thymine dimer. So here we have adjacent thymine residues, and you can see in the picture here, the <coughs> UV light has caused it to form the cyclic structure that normally wouldn't be present. We'd have two distinct nucleotides. Instead, they've been joined in this chemical bond. In the lower left, we can see as we do this, we distort the DNA. As DNA polymerase encounters these thymine dimers, it can't move past them. And so if we don't repair the mechanism, it will simply discontinue synthesis. In the next video lesson, we'll start to look at some of the repair mechanisms for correcting this types of, these types of DNA damage. We'll look more particularly at mismatched or damaged bases.